Welcome to Online Worship with Good Samaritan United Methodist Church, where we believe, as Christians, we have found an approach to God through the life and teachings of Jesus. We begin with our opening music. This summer, we've been traveling through a worship series that has us exploring a different national park or monument each week. We're looking at what makes each holy space unique, as well as what we might learn from it to inform and enrich our lives. Today's focus is on Grand Teton National Park in what is now Wyoming, and our theme is companionship. As we celebrate the sacredness of our preserved lands, we also need to acknowledge the sacredness of these places to the first people who lived here, as well as the injustices that caused great harm. Humans have been active in the Grand Teton area for at least 11,000 years. Although the area has harsh winters, fish, plant life, and game were plentiful before white settlement. Game, including mountain goat, elk, moose, and bison provided both food and clothing. Camas roots, bulbs, and berries were a staple food. The area was valued for its minerals. Obsidian, a glass-like mineral that could be shaped into sharp tools and weapons, appeared in large deposits throughout the Yellowstone and Teton region. Obsidian from this area was particularly valued and traded over a large part of North America. Indigenous groups including the Banach, Blackfoot, Crow, Flathead, Gros Ventre, Nez Pierce and Shoshone camped and coexisted in the area during the warmer months of the year, while wintering in warmer climates. The Western Shoshone people have the strongest ties to the area, but welcomed and traded with other Native American groups. As with nearby Yellowstone, many of the roads in Grand Teton National Park and surrounding areas were built on ancient trails created by the first inhabitants of this land. There is evidence that Native American groups were the first to ascend the Tetons, possibly on spiritual pilgrimages. Both nearby Yellowstone and Tetons were considered sacred places by several groups, especially the Shoshone. The Shoshone believed strongly in dreams and visions and in the connection to the land and spirit world through animal helpers and guides. They do not believe in land ownership, but believe that they are one with the land. Preservation of that land is of prime importance. White settlement, abuse of the land for its resources, and displacement from their traditional lands was, and still is, deeply painful. As with our other national parks, indigenous groups today work with the Park Service in stewardship of the land and in important cultural sites. May we honor the pain of the past, not with guilt, but with an increasing commitment to justice for the land and for all of our relatives. May we continue to advocate for displaced people. May we continue to cultivate our connection with the land. And may we commit to the hard work of restoring beauty and health to our shared world. Thank you. 
At last, the wide sky, the wide land, broken and bare, but stretching far to the limitless blue sky of Wyoming. Room to breathe, to stretch one's soul's wings again. Here the big country still is. Always a joy to come back, to find it still big, still stretching away. Meeting and passing startling buttes which rise here and there in dry water courses, drift fences, once in a while a ranch house and corrals nestling under cottonwoods and willows in one of those water courses. Once in a while a few cattle, a band of antelope in the sage, and some horses galloping with the wind. A great bird and peace of golden sky can give one peace. Watch him as he soars and dips a graceful pattern with no self-consciousness. There before a golden curtain, the mind, loosed and emptied of all edged and flattering thoughts, goes freely, floating out to meet the bird. We need such communion. We need to remember, we are still animals. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. 
It does not rejoice in wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. My name is Melanie Homan, and it's an honor to be with you virtually as we worship God together. I've been a United Methodist pastor for 20 years, and I served Centennial, St. Anthony Park, and Lake Harriet congregations. I see that the youth from Good Samaritan and Lake Harriet joined forces this year to participate in the Appalachian Service Project, which I'm really glad to see. I served as a chaperone on many ASP trips when I was at Lake Harriet and trust that the youth from your congregation will come home with many stories and lots of memories. They will have learned how to use new tools, but more importantly, they will have discovered new things about themselves, life, and what it means to be in community. I went on family leave four years ago in an attempt to live a better balance between my work and life with my family. Since then, I've received my doctorate in occupational therapy, and I work as an OT in St. Paul Public Schools. I'm also adjunct faculty at St. Catherine University. The great thing is that I still get to preach and lead worship, which I love, but in a more sustainable way for my family. When Carol asked if I would preach for her, I said yes right away. Carol and I have been in a clergy group together for several years, and she has my utmost respect. She was also my parents' pastor down in Mankato, and I would do anything for her. She made it even easier to say yes when she told me that you are doing a sermon series on the national parks and that I get to talk about Grand Teton National Park. I love national parks. They are America's holy ground. My husband Brennan and I, early in our marriage, decided that we wanted to take our kids, Riley and Dylan, to as many national parks as we could. We wanted them to experience the beauty of God's creation in all of the radically different ways that it manifests itself in the parks. Brennan is a hydrologist and geologist, so he loves rock formations, and every trip to a national park is an opportunity for family lectures on the various layers of rock how the mountains and gullies were formed, and why there are sea creature fossils in the middle of the desert. We love to camp, hike, fish, and stargaze. So we love the parks. And we aren't the only ones. It used to be that we would decide at the very last minute, even as we were packing up our minivan, which direction we were going to go and which park we were going to check off our list because you didn't need reservations, or rather, they didn't take reservations and camping was just first come, first serve. That has changed as more and more people flood to the parks to experience their unique beauty. Now, if you want to go to a park, you need to plan. So far, we have been to 33 parks with our kids. We have hit the halfway point of our goal, but the challenge is the ones that are left are the hard ones to get to and a lot more expensive. This year, we are finally going to the park closest to us, Voyagers National Park. It took us this long because this is one of the parks that requires a bit more planning. You can't just hop in a car and drive up to Voyagers because there are no roads. Later in August, we are renting a houseboat so that we can finally explore the islands and lakes of Voyagers. Some of our best memories as a family come from long road trips and misadventures while exploring the parks together. And as long as Riley and Dylan still want to hang out with us and go on family trips, we will keep going. Because our shared time together is just as important as the natural beauty that surrounds us. I know the idea of going days without a shower and sleeping in a tent are not everyone's idea of fun, but for us, it's perfect. I crave being in a place where my cell phone gets no service, where there are no coffee shops and plastic playgrounds. If you want coffee, you need to boil your water over the campfire and the kids can discover that boulders, logs, twigs, and dirt can make for a pretty great playground too. I'm always struck by the distinctly unique geographies of places that really aren't that far away from us. The Badlands are drastically different than the lakes, trees, and prairies of Minnesota. 
Go a little further west and there is boiling hot steam pouring out from the earth in Yellowstone. The rotten egg smell of sulfur, geysers erupting at regular intervals. It's breathtakingly beautiful. Head south and those plates of rock push up into snow-covered mountain peaks in July at Grand Tetons National Park. This morning, we're taking a look at Grand Tetons alongside the value of companionship. When reflecting on companionship in their book on America's Holy Ground, Brad Lyons and Bruce Barkhauer reflect that we have an innate yearning for companionship in our life. Having somebody at our side as we journey through life's passes and valleys. God created humans to be with other humans, however that relationship presents itself. Sometimes that companionship comes from a partner or spouse. Other times it comes from a child, a good friend, a complete stranger, or if we are really lucky, from a park ranger. Because it's one thing to hike along Jenny Lake by yourself and think, look at that cloud, look at how it reflects off the mountains excuse me, reflects off the lake and look at those mountains. It's another thing to be able to share with someone else, to exclaim out loud about that chipmunk that just ran across the trail and to have someone join in proclaiming the wonder around you. Whenever we go on park trips, we try to go on ranger led hikes because they know so much. It's one thing to look around and see beauty it's another thing to listen while someone who knows the geology, the history, the plants, the animals, the stories of the space, and shares them with you along the way. Rangers make wonderful hiking companions. They provide depth and understanding to our awe and wonder. We go on ranger-led hikes, but also join in ranger-led educational programs. If you have kids, I'd encourage them to participate in the Junior Ranger Program to learn about each park and environmental stewardship. In the Grand Tetons, we brought our kids to a ranger program on bear safety. The ranger taught the kids, and presumably all of us adults who were in attendance, what to do to stay safe in bear country. So in case you go to bear country and you miss the ranger program, this is what they shared. Number one, be alert and don't leave out food. Leaving out food is like extending a formal invitation to a bear to join you for dinner. Number two, make lots of noise. Number three, hike in groups. Don't go by yourself. Number four, do not run. And finally, carry bug spray. The ranger told them that singing songs is a great way to let bears know that you are in the area so that you don't surprise them. They said to not hike alone, always go with other people. That way you've got someone who can help you out, whether you have bear issues or a sprained ankle or you can't read your hiking map. And most importantly, the ranger said, do not run. Stand your ground because a bear's instinct is to chase after animals that run away. The ranger had the kids practice making themselves look larger than they are, and then he taught the adults how to use bear spray. The bear spray is a last resort and something that is rarely needed if you follow the first four rules. The bear spray is a deterrent that will keep both you and the bear safe without hurting anyone. After all this bear safety education, the ranger signed the kids' junior ranger booklets and off we went on a hike, ready to follow all of the rules, except for carrying bear spray because we did not have any. I thought, what are the chances? We'll never see a bear. Our kids are way too loud, except they apparently aren't loud enough. Hiking along, we came right up on a bear in the path and the first word out of my husband's mouth, can you guess it? run and off he ran at which point i said kids do not listen to your father stay put let the bear be remember what the ranger said for the bear didn't see us he was too busy eating berries and i figured we would wait until the bear was done with his snack and then we would continue on our way after the bear had done the same 
So I pulled out my phone and started taking pictures as we waited for the bear to move on. For different reasons, neither my husband nor I were very good role models or companions in that moment. As I said before, rangers make the best hiking companions. As I think about companionship, I'm reminded of the story of a group of friends in the Bible who are doing their best to be good friends, even if their choices are a bit questionable. Word was getting out about Jesus and his teachings, and people were coming from villages all over Galilee and Judea, including Jerusalem, to hear him. They wanted to hear what he had to say. They wanted to see with their own eyes what he was doing, because word was also out that he was healing people. There was a person who was paralyzed, and they had some really good friends, and these friends heard about Jesus, and they think, we need to get our friend to Jesus. If we just listen to what he says, if we just get an audience with this man, our friend will be healed. But there were too many people. Sort of like what happens when you go to Yellowstone or Zion. There are too many people. So you can't see the park ranger during their talks and you can't hear the park ranger during the talks because everyone has decided to go hear what they have to say. But these friends, these companions, they are desperate and they are determined. The crowds are immense and they will do whatever they need to do to get their friend to Jesus. So they get this wild and ridiculous idea that they will climb up the roof of the room that Jesus is in, which is about as ridiculous and unsafe as going for a hike without bear spray. Not only are they going to climb up to the top of the roof, they plan to do so while carrying their paralyzed friend on a cot. I suspect if you ask a park ranger or someone who has been part of a mountain rescue effort, they will tell you how hard it is to carry someone up and down and out of a mountainous area on a stretcher and how dangerous it is. And yet rescue teams do it all the time because they are determined to do whatever they can to save whatever person has stumbled upon trouble in the woods. But back to our story. So not only do these friends climb to the top of the roof, they decide to haul their friend up to the roof too on a stretcher. And then they destroy the roof. They pull it apart so that the roof is no longer a roof, no longer providing protection from the elements. And they drop their friend down right in front of Jesus. Now the scripture says that they lowered him, but let's be real. Is there really a gentle, safe way to lower a cot with someone on it through a roof? I imagine the person on the cot was a bit worried that his friend's attempt to save him or heal him might actually kill him. These friends may fail the clear thinking test, but they get an A for perseverance and determination. They get a gold star for being the best companions they could be to one another, regardless of the results. Now in this story, the results are pretty good. The person is healed, they pick up their mat, and the friends walk home together praising God. Sometimes our companions do not make good decisions. Sometimes they panic. Sometimes they run in the face of fear and do the exact opposite of what they should do. Sometimes they get ridiculous ideas into their heads, like climbing and dismantling roofs or taking pictures of bears eating berries. But in the end, our life is ha better for having companions to share in life's misadventures together. We do our best to be good friends, to love one another, because love is patient and kind and it bears all things. My hope for you is that you are surrounded by people who are good companions. My hope for you is that you are a good companion to the people around you, whether they are friend or stranger. My hope for you is that you will get to experience the beauty of the parks in your lifetime. My hope for you is that just as we gather with all the hordes of people from ages past, who gathered to hear what Jesus would say to them, that you will embody the teachings of Jesus 
and that you will also listen to the wise words of others, especially park rangers, when it comes to bears. So remember, number one, put your food away, always. Two, be prepared, get some bug spray. Three, make lots of noise, sing a joyful song to God in the woods. Number four, do not run. And finally, finally, never go it alone. Amen. You fill up my senses Like a night in the forest Like the mountains in springtime Like a walk in the rain Like a storm in the desert Like a sleepy blue ocean my senses come fill me again come let me love you let me give my life to you let me drown in your laughter let me die in your arms Let me lay down beside you Let me always be with you Come let me love you Come love me again May you be blessed with good friends. May you learn to be a good friend to yourself. May you be able to journey to that place in your soul where there is great love, warmth, feeling, and forgiveness. May this change you. May it transfigure that which is negative, distant, or cold in you. May you be brought into the real passion, kinship, and affinity of belonging. May you treasure your friends. May you be good to them. And may you be there for them. May they bring you all the blessings, challenges, truth, and light that you need for your journey. 
May you never be isolated. May you always be in the gentle nest of belonging with your Anamkara or your soul friends. Amen. May we this week continue to hold in our prayers those struggling with mental or physical illness, addiction, trauma recovery, homelessness, war, or strained family relationships. We pray the Creator will return all things to wholeness through her steadfast love of all people and through our love and compassion for each other. We bring all of these intentions to you, gracious God, as we pray the prayer our brother Jesus taught us, as adapted by Parker Palmer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come, for yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. If you found online worship here at Good Samaritan United Methodist Church for the first time today, we want to thank you for choosing to worship here. As a reconciling congregation, we pledge our love and acceptance to all persons, and especially to those who have felt hurt or abandoned by the institutional church. So please know that this is a place of safety and belonging for you. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider liking or following our page so that we'll be easier to find next time. I hope that you'll join me in thanking Reverend Melanie Holman for her message today on companionship. I appreciated her being with us today, and I hope that you did too. It's not too late to participate in the Veep and Joyce Uptown Food Shelves July Food Drive. To help our neighbors who are experiencing food insecurity, please go to good.org slash give and select GS Missions from the Fund menu and then either Joyce Uptown or Veep Food Shelf from the Subfund menu. If you'd rather write a check to Good Samaritan United Methodist Church, just be sure to write the food shelf of your choice in the memo line and mail it to the church office. Now, as we go, I encourage you to be open to who God might be nudging you to reach out to in the spirit of being a good companion. Maybe it's a neighbor you know who is lonely, or maybe it is someone from this faith community that you want to get to know better, or perhaps you want to work on some skills or to, to make you more aware or to help you to be a better listener for a loved one in your own household. Whatever step you take to reach out and to be a companion for others, know that Christ goes alongside you as an ever-present companion. And for that, we give thanks. Amen. down and trouble and you need some love and care and nothing nothing is going right close your eyes and think of me and soon I will be Darkest 
You got a friend. 